today we are going to be doing uh, our test strips. So we're going to be actually etching our test strips. And so leaving off from where we were uh, the other day, we had uh, cut our plates, we coated them with hard ground, and then uh, we talked about how we're going to draw on our plates. So here I have my zinc plate. I did a little drawing on each one of these sections and I have 1 minute, 2 minutes, 5 minutes, 10, 15, 20, 30, and 40 minutes uh, separated out here. And I did draw the numbers for the times on each plate section and you have to remember that you have to draw them reversed because when you print this it's gonna be mirrored. Um, I did a small just hatching and then cross hatching section on each of this. A little bit of a squiggly, a little bit of some stippling, and then <clears throat> I opened up a section of each plate where, um, you know, something that people do commonly when they're first starting with line etching is they want to make a, a, a wide mark so they just remove a lot of the hard ground from a single space. So you could imagine a line that's thick. Um, and people usually do that when they want a bold line, but they don't realize that when you open up a zinc plate that much, it's going to um, open bite. And the that line won't actually be as dark as you expect it to. It's kind of counterintuitive. Um, you'll actually end up with a little bit of a gray line rather than uh, black because there's nothing for the ink to hold on to. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about what we're gonna do next. So <clears throat> I like to have students do a little trick with some some tape. Um, I'm gonna use some packaging tape here and we're just gonna find a strip of this. We'll grab some scissors. We don't need a lot a lot of this. It's actually kind of I've got the fan going, so I don't want to... Uh, let's just cut this down a little bit. So that it's thinner than the width of the plates. So I'm just going to take a piece of this. put it on the back and then I'll fold over the rest right about there now the reason I'm doing this is because when I put this in the acid it'll be easier for me to take it in and out of the acid if I have something to, to hold on to um, because you know, getting your fingers underneath here, especially if you're wearing gloves, which I would recommend, you know, it becomes kind of difficult. <clears throat> so I'm gonna need a pair of goggles. And where did I put them all? Um, I guess I put the goggles over here. Um, there's usually more goggles than this. I'm not sure what happened to them all, but let's go back here and uh, take a look around here. So I do like to rinse off my goggles before I use them, especially when they're in the, the etching studio. Uh, I usually have my own pair that I use, but because of everything that's been going on, um, I don't know if, if the room's been closed up or not. And I know for a, a, a section of the summer, this room did fill up with more nitric gas than I was comfortable with because there was no ventilation running and they closed all the doors to the studio. 
and because we had to leave in a hurry i think whoever was in here last left the nitric acid bath up and so the nitric acid you know evaporated into the into the uh studio and so there was a little bit of a film on everything i had to spend a lot of time this summer um just wiping stuff down so i'm gonna wear my goggles right now okay and And I'm gonna come over and get my zinc plate. Um, okay, in this bath right here is nitric acid and water. It, I have it diluted down 10 to one. So it is 10 parts water, one part nitric acid. Um, I, I will refill this every week. It does get low. So if you see that the, the bath is lower than what your plate you know if it looks uh pretty dirty and it just looks rather low you might want to send me an email and i can change it but i i'm i change it every monday um the reason being is the water will evaporate first and the nitric acid will remain in the bath and it'll start to get stronger and stronger the more that the water evaporates so when you come in, you know, you, you sh the lid should be down when you come in. And uh, if you go to etch, you have to push this to the side like that. You might need, if you're a little bit shorter, you might need to get the, the, uh, the step stool out. Um, there's another stool over here. You know, there's always a stool around, but just letting you know, if you have trouble reaching this, please don't climb over. You want to, you know, get a stool and and uh, move that over. Um, I just don't want anything to happen over here. Uh, this nitric acid, you know, it is corrosive and it is dangerous. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're not getting any of it on your clothing, on your hands. Um, you wanna wash your hands right away over here if you do. Um, this is where our, this is our satellite, nitric acid satellite waste container. So this, whenever I change out the acid, it goes right in here. Um, this whole area, whenever you're back here working, you wanna turn on the exhaust, just so that you're not breathing in the, uh, the fumes of this. Um, there's some other things about nitric acid that uh, I should talk to you guys about, but I, I'm the one who mixes the nitric acid. Nobody else will unless um, they specifically ask to, um, if, if they wanna be a TA or something like that. So, okay, so this is dangerous. Obviously, if there's a spill, then you need to call UUP. If there's a spill of this uh, parts washer, then you wanna come over here and there's the UUP number right there, contact health and safety as well. Um, you, if there's a nitric acid spill, you don't wanna try and clean it up yourself. You wanna call those numbers first and um, get some help over here. The this spill kit is not for nitric acid that is for solvents so any oils so if there's a big spill of oils you would come in and open this up and you would use this towel to basically contain it you would wrap that around wherever the spill is and then call uh for the uup um same with this if if there's something bad that happens and you get a, a large quantity of this on you you want to come over to the shower over here and if you have it on your clothes you're going to want to rinse yourself off immediately um, also if you get it in your eyes um, you're going to want to step push this and two streams of water will come out and you want to open your eyes and and flush them out in the water so hold open your eyes flush them out in the water and uh, and then you know you you might want to call UUP as well or have a friend call UUP um, <clears throat> let's see okay so there is a clock right across from me I can see the second hand on it and uh, it's kind of convenient for where this is located. Um, now, if I wanted to, if this was a 
test strip or if this was a print of an image, you know, and I was being very careful about this, then I would want to take a small brush and touch up the edges of my plate. You can see that there's a lot of zinc exposed here. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now for the test plate because, you know, I want to do this film, but you would want to touch this up before you put it in there. Um, you know, you could go through with a small brush and any little nicks that you might have occurred while you were doing your your line work, you know, go through and just take a small brush with a little jar of hard ground. You can take hard ground, put it in a small container, and then uh, dip your brush in that and just touch up anything that might have gotten exposed. <clears throat> so I'm going to put my goggles back on. And I'm not going to be wearing gloves for this, but I would recommend that you guys do wear gloves. Um, I'll, I'm so used to not wearing it, it doesn't really bother me. If you have like little um, marks on your finger, like hangnails or anything like that, you know, when you put your hand in here, if you do get nitric acid on your hands, it's gonna, you're gonna feel a sting. If you just put it in very quickly to take your nitric acid, your, uh, your zinc plate in and out of here, um, you know, you probably won't notice it. So that's a little bit deceiving. You wanna make sure that you um, wash your hands immediately after touching the nitric acid. And, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably wear gloves also. So I'm gonna put some gloves on. We'll come over to the nitric bath. And the first amount that I wanna put this in the acid is for one minute. So I'm just gonna go in. And when I lay this down in the acid, I want it to lay down away from me. Whichever direction I'm putting it in, I, I wanna lay it away from me, because if it splashes, it's gonna splash backwards. Um, if I put it in and drop it like this, then it might splash towards me. So I wanna make sure that I don't get any on me. And I'm gonna look at the clock and the first time is for one minute. So once the second hand gets to a quarter of, then I will drop this in the acid. Okay, one minute. And I tried to drop it close to the edge of the water. I hope you can see that okay. Or close to the edge of the tray so that I can easily pick that up. Now, I don't want to get too close, but what you can see, you can see that the line work is starting to bubble up throughout my drawing. And that's because CO2 is being released. So there's a chemical reaction that's happening between the nitric acid and the, and the zinc plate where, you know, the etching is occurring. So that nitric acid is eating away at the zinc plate and you can see little bubbles starting to form. Now, this is a short time, say a minute, but if I were to leave this in here for a long amount of time, those bubbles would start to really uh, build up on the plate. And so I would want to, there we go. So that was one minute. I'm gonna bring it over to the sink. Notice what I did here. I let it kind of drip dry and then move it so that it's horizontal so that it doesn't drip on the floor. I'm gonna remove my glove, one glove, and just spray this off. And I wanna spray off my other glove as well. Anything that made contact with the nitric acid, you know, do my hands, do my other glove, and spray off the front and back of the zinc plate. Now the packing tape is fine uh, in the nitric acid because it won't, uh, the nitric acid won't um, eat away at this plastic. So it's, it's nice and handy to, to do this. I'm gonna leave those there. And at this point I wanna come over and find some paper towels. So I have some paper towels nearby. And again, I would get used to, to blotting. So 
sometimes you can reuse the paper towels, you know, it's not getting dirty or anything. I'm just gonna probably try to reuse one towel for most of this today. And so now if you look closely, even if you feel it, probably one minute you're not gonna really feel anything happening on your zinc plate. But we did see that there was, things were happening. Now I'm gonna take, we have a several loops here. They look like they got a little gunked up. And I'm gonna clean these off at some point. Um, let's see. I'll get some lens cleaner and clean these off. But what you can do is look at these through a loop. I don't know if you can see that at all. And you can kind of inspect it and you can actually see that the nitric acid did do some etching in there. And it's kind of nice. I wanna clean these before anybody else uses them. So now I've, I've had it in there for one minute. And what I wanna do is cover up that section that is meant to be for one minute. So what I'll do is take, for this you can use any old hard ground. It doesn't have to be any, anything that's particularly good. You know, I could use that contaminated hard ground if I wanted to for this one, but I'm just gonna get a small amount and I can reuse one of these brushes that have been left out because I don't have to have a really good layer on it. So I can take one of these brushes. I think people were using this one earlier today. Yep, this is still soft. So I'm gonna take my brush. Again, I don't wanna drip onto other people's plates. And I'm just gonna find that section. And I'm just going to apply hard ground for that one minute section. Um, I, and now I have to let this dry. So I'm gonna let that kind of move down. I could see that it was beating up on that one side a little bit. Just wanna move that around a little bit. It should dry a little bit faster that way as well. And I'm gonna leave this for, I don't know, uh, maybe five minutes and check it. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but it, you know, it's, it's best if it is dry in between. It's kind of hard with these first times because, you know, um, that hard ground is gonna remain wet for a while and I don't wanna put it back in the nitric acid when it's wet because when I take it out of the acid and I bring it over here to spray it off, the sprayer is gonna move that hard ground all over the zinc plate and I don't want it to do that. Also, when I go to dry it with paper towels, the wet hard ground is gonna come off and start to, to um, you know, it'll move around and open up parts of the zinc plate that I don't want it to. So I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and I'll be right back. So there is a fan, it's usually in this room. Um, I just put my, my plate in front of the fan to dry a little bit faster. Um, but you can see it's pretty well dry. It's still a little bit tacky, but it's okay for what we're doing. Um, so the next time that I have is two minutes. So all of this plate has already been in the nitric acid bath for one minute. So I need to subtract that from my next time. So it's going from two minutes to one minute. And so I only need to leave it in the nitric acid for one minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready and do that. So once again, I'm gonna be looking at the time. Drop it in for one minute and, okay, so now I'm just gonna wait. Um, when the times get a little bit longer, we can use a feather. Here we go, a goose feather. And there's usually a container of water here. I'll get one out. But, but what happens when, the, when the, the plate is in the acid for longer, 
you're gonna wanna take a feather and just occasionally remove the nitric acid, or the, uh, the carbon dioxide bubbles that are coming off of the plate. And I'll show you in just a minute why you would wanna do that. Got a, just a couple more seconds here, okay. So I'm gonna let this drip dry, hold it parallel to the floor, take off one of my gloves. And that's good, I'm gonna set this here, spray off the glove. Spray off my other glove. And now I can take my zinc plate. And so you can see where the, where the hard ground wasn't quite dry. You can see that just from blotting it, the paper towel did take up some of the hard ground. But I'm ready now to move these over a little bit. Go ahead. And block out or mask out or stop out if you're a photographer stop out some of this area there and sometimes I have to go back over the old section and again I'm gonna let that dry I'll bring it over to the fan again and I'm gonna show you why we need to remove those bubbles periodically usually around every five minutes that your plate is in the acid. Take a piece of paper, just so I don't make a mess here. Okay, so I'll just draw on this. Let's see. There's a marker. So if I'm looking at a cross cut of my zinc plate if there's little lines in the zinc plate the acid is going to be biting down into those holes or into those lines incised lines now little bubbles will form on, on the surface, just like that. And if the bubbles start to form on your plate and they get too close together along a line, then the nitric acid won't actually be able to get underneath those bubbles. The bubble is going to be rejecting the nitric acid. So the CO2 bubble is gonna be rejecting the nitric acid and the hole that is being created will stop and it actually the nitric acid will start to move to the side. So if we do a, a larger image here, right? The nitric acid won't be able to get past this bubble because it's, been, it's kind of created an, a vacuum or an airlock. And so the nitric acid is gonna start biting around the bubble and it's gonna create jagged lines. So instead of having a nice line, your lines will begin to open up and look something like that. So you'll lose the clarity of the line over time. So we wanna 
um, just every five minutes. So if, if, and you really only have to do that for the longer time. So you don't have to worry about it until you're about, um, like say if you're going from 10 minutes to 20 minutes, halfway through that time, you wanna go over and remove the bubbles. If you're going from 20 to 30 minutes, you wanna do the same thing. Just take that little goose feather, gently go over the plate, remove the bubbles, and that's all you have to do. It'll just open up the plate again. Um, we do that with uh, other processes as well, but. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find a container here. I'm sure I've got something. Here we go, this will work. I'm gonna take this container and fill it up with water. And I'm gonna put my feather in it. And when I'm done using this, so that this is just to make it so the nitric acid doesn't stay on the feather. I can put it in here. And when I'm done for the day, I'll take the container and the feather, bring it over to the sink, dump it out, rinse out the feather, rinse out the container, and uh, put it back for the next person to use. Um, so my plate has been now submerged in the acid for two minutes total. And I need to just keep going through the times until I reach 40 minutes. So it's kind of slow going in the, in, the, in the beginning because you know we're waiting for the hard ground to dry. But uh, my next time is five minutes. So this has been in for two minutes and now I'm going to five. So I just need to submerge this in the acid for three minutes next. So it's not quite as long. And actually that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll give it another couple minutes and then I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I would like to uh, cover printing it, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to today. So um, we'll, we'll put that in another video next time. But for the most part, you just wanna keep doing that, go through the process all the way to, to 40 minutes or 60 minutes, preferably if you have 60 minutes on your plate. And then when I'm done, I can bring it over to the, the parts washer over there, take a toothbrush, remove all of the hard ground, and I'm ready to print. So that is all for today. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. So I've just finished my etching and I've put it in for 40 minutes altogether. Um, and you can see all of this is covered in hard ground except for this last little section where I just pull, had it in the acid for 10 minutes. I just rinsed it off in the water and I dropped down my lid to my acid. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my exhaust fans now so that you might be able to hear me a little bit better. So um, what I wanna do now is I wanna remove the hard ground from my zinc plate. So I'm gonna put on some gloves. You know, you're gonna to wanna to have some goggles for this too. And I'm gonna take my plastic off. My zinc plate right in there and let that come over top of it. Grab one of these toothbrushes. There is a brush in here, but I wouldn't use this, it's too abrasive. So it would probably scratch up your zinc. And I'm just gonna use the toothbrush to gently go and remove the hard ground from those stubborn areas, like where with, with the lines, where the lines are. Uh, sometimes I've seen Hard ground, if, if you leave it on there for like a couple of years, you know, and you come back to a plate, um, you might have to use lacquer thinner to remove your hard ground or paint, thin, um, paint remover, paint stripper. But that's pretty good. I'll turn this off. I wanna be careful with it here. 
and let this dry. And sometimes I just grab a rag out of the garbage if there's one handy that doesn't look too bad and just wipe off the excess and then I can get rid of my gloves. And I have to bring this over to the sink and clean it. I could use Ajax again, but um, just regular soap is fine. Dish soap, hand soap. Okay. I don't want to use these ones. They do have a little bit of hard ground on it. And let's take a look. Okay, so I think you guys can see that okay. So there's my lightest, my one minute, two minutes, five, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40. And it looks pretty good. Um, so we're gonna print that now. Okay, if I'm gonna be printing, I wanna check, this is our water bath for, for paper. When you get your paper, it's gonna have sizing in it most likely. And sizing is like starch, so it stiffens up the paper. Um, it's good for some types of printmaking like, um, you know, some type, some people like to use sizing and screen printing. Um, but for what we do, typically we want the paper to be soft. And so it's recommended that you actually will put the paper in cold water, let it sit there for about an hour before you use it. Some people say two hours. You know, you probably are gonna put it in for like a half an hour. You know, when you come in and you know you're gonna print, cut your paper, put it in the tray, and just leave it so it'll, it'll be there. Um, if there's more people printing, we'll use this larger tray, but it's easier for me to manage this small one uh, when I'm alone. Now, this is our hot plate, and it goes up to 500 degrees, I believe, um, maybe even hotter, but typically what we're going to use this for is just to loosen the ink. So I keep it between, I keep it about 150 degrees, um, maybe 175. I just use it very briefly, to be honest with you, to um, get my ink warmed up and loosened up on the plate. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to put down a piece of newsprint or newspaper or just a piece of a magazine. I have lots of other pieces of magazine and newspaper down here. You know, you can grab a couple pieces if you like. Um, I'm going to switch to this glove for handling the plate because it does get a little bit hot. Now these small plates are, are a little bit difficult to wipe, but, um, we'll see, we'll see how we do. I need a spatula. Usually there's some over there. So we'll grab a couple spatulas. We'll leave them over here. I'm gonna pick out my ink. Now it's been a while since I've been in the studio, so I'm not sure what the condition of these inks is because we kind of left everything in a very, very quickly just because of the pandemic. So if the lid is sticking, you know, use a glove because you don't want to cut yourself. You don't want to accidentally slip. Just go around, use the edge of one of these and just work the lid off. 
we go through this ink pretty quickly in the studio but traditionally what you would do is put a, a ring of Vaseline around the lid to uh, make it so that it opens up a little bit easier now it looks like we do have a skin that started over top so it's hardened right so if I touch this it's like it feels kind of like rubber now I'm gonna since there's a skin on it I'm gonna go ahead and leave the skin but I'm gonna find an edge here and just cut around the whole thing typically you won't have a, a skin it's just because it sat over the summer and due to the, the COVID now I'm gonna go ahead and just scoop some of this out. We'll use this up pretty quickly, so I'm not too worried about preserving this correctly. So I just took out probably more than I need for this. Well, much more than I need for this. If I open up the drawer, there's little pieces of cardstock that I cut up. And I'm just gonna take about that much on my card, and I'm going to spread it onto my plate so you notice i'm all of this is was soft ink it was underneath that skin layer that was on my plate so i'm gonna let that kind of warm up my my zinc my hot plate was not hot so i'm gonna let that kind of warm up a little bit and you know this is more than i need so i'm gonna put try and put this back if i can just gonna lift that up. Put that in there. And, you know, we could probably use some of that next time. So I'm only planning on doing one print. So I'm not gonna get out more. You know, these are all of our inks. We're using oil-based inks. This is a modifier. This is plate redu redu reduction oil. Um, so sometimes you might want your ink to be looser. Um, intense black is a harder ink, so you might want to mix a, a few drops of this in with it. Um, number three varnish, we use that for some stuff. Um, here's some colored inks. You know, this hasn't been organized yet, so it's still a little bit in disarray. This whole area is a little bit dirty for my liking. I have to go through these rags, throw out the worst ones, and um, this should all be wiped down with mineral spirits to, to clean it up a bit. Um, I don't usually use these. I, I usually take straight from the can, and it's usually much easier. But I want to use the cardstock. You can see how much easier this is spreading now that it's had a chance to warm up. I usually use the cardstock because it won't, you know, if I were to use one of these um, palette knives to put the, the ink onto my plate, it would scratch it. So I want to use something that's not abrasive. And when I apply it on here, I'm going to go from a few different angles. So I'm, I'm not just going to wipe it and and then be done with it. I want to really get that ink into all of those grooves. So I'm going to wipe this in from different angles on the plate. Rotate it. And really push it into those grooves. Sometimes if you don't do this enough, your lines will appear white and you might come to me and ask, you know, what happened, and it's probably just because you didn't push your ink into the grooves well enough. And then I'm gonna remove the excess. This is a lot more ink than I would usually do. It was, you know, unfortunate that the, the skin was on that. So this could still warm up a little bit more. Um, you might wanna use those gloves though when you're doing that because now I've got ink on my finger which will transfer onto my paper. Um, I got most of it off, but I'm gonna to switch to gloves now. And what I'm gonna do here is find some old tarlatan. I'll show you, 
if you have a fresh tarlatan, it's gonna be very stiff. So you're gonna wanna just like open it up, crumple it up, maybe rub it on this, on the hot plate, open it up again, crumple it up. You know, when they get stiff, when they're brand new, that's what you wanna do. But I'm gonna start with a really dirty piece of tarlatan. And notice I just folded in all of the edges. And now I have a really stiff pad. And what I wanna do is remove the excess. I'm not using a, a lot of pressure, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of this because it's a little bit more than I want. And I, I will do different types of wiping for different size plates and different type of etched plates. So this is just line etching. But typically, you know, when you're, when you're inking a plate, you know, you've fully developed the values, which means there might be some spit bite or some aqua tint on it. Now this plate would be hot. I'm just gonna do circles. This is a small plate, so this is probably the best way to do this. Um, oftentimes you'll do circles like this to help push in residual ink into the grooves a little bit more. And then once you've removed the, a fair amount of the excess, then you might wanna switch to a cleaner piece of cheesecloth or tarlatan. So again, I'm just folding in all of those edges so I have a nice stiff pad. And now I'm gonna very gently, oops, wipe the rest of this off. Now I'm just barely making contact with this and I'm doing little circles. I'll show you when we're printing an addition how I approach it because I do it a little bit differently. Um, I usually like to wipe in directions and then rotate the plate. But for a small plate like this, you know, you kind of have to put it in your hand and gently just go over it with your cloth. So this is very delicate. I don't want to over wipe this. I don't want to under wipe it. If I see feathery marks all the way around it, you know, make sure that I'm getting my edges well. And I can inspect it up close and look for feathered lines and I don't really see any. So I think I'm pretty much um, accurately wiped here. Now, some people like to take a piece of phone book and put it over their plate and gently go over the plate again. Some people do all of the, the wiping with just foam book. Um, I tend not to use this because um, it removes some of the plate tone and I typically like the plate tone. Plate tone is just the gray that you'll see all over the plate. I'm gonna turn this off because I don't need this on anymore. And I'm gonna take a felt scrap. This is a blanket, part of a blanket. And I'm gonna carefully try and just wipe the edges. Now I let this foul bite in the acid so that you can see what the acid will do on those edges if you don't apply the hard ground evenly. So I'm trying to not touch the surface of this. I'm gonna go all the way around the plate. I'm not sure if you can see this. I hope you can. So I'm not too worried about the appearances of this because it is a test plate. You know, it's just a reference guide for how long I need to etch my plate. 
but I don't want it to look terrible either. So just going around, not doing the surface of the plate, just the edges. Okay. And once I have that, I'm gonna come over to my etching press. Now, this press is still set from last semester. I will do a video on how to set the pressure on this, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Okay, I'm gonna put my plate there. I wanna put it in lengthwise. And now I need to get my paper and move this. Now I want clean hands for this. Um, I'll show you how to make a paper tab, but if I was printing my edition, you know, I would, I would definitely not be touching it if my hands had any ink on them. Just gonna find a clean spot between two blotters, put it down there and take this roller and roll it out a few times. If this roller is too big for you and you have a hard time maneuvering it, you can select a smaller roller from the, the wall over there. What I don't wanna do is use my hands because I'll get ink from my hands onto the blotters and then it'll transfer from the blotters onto my paper. So here's my paper. This is just a scrap piece of BFK and I'm just gonna eyeball this one so I hold it from opposite corners. So I'm just eyeballing and I kind of just go like this a couple of times and then place it down and don't move it once it's down. Now with my blankets, we'll go over the blankets a little bit more in depth when I do a demonstration about setting the pressure but I want my sizing catcher down first. So this is my sizing catcher and then I want two woven blankets. These are my pushers. So a sizing catcher that catches the excess sizing from the paper and these are woven blankets. And once this is engaged, I run this through the press. And here is my print. I'm just gonna pick a corner and pull that up and I have a print. So this is my test print. And if I look at it, I can see these are my times, one minute. You can see it's pretty delicate. There's two minutes, five, 10, 15, 20, 30, and 40. Now you can see that those areas that I opened up, they are a little bit gray, um, but I actually, I, I, when I wiped it, I was pretty, I used a really tightly packed um, tarlatan. So, you know, I did, I was able to leave a lot of ink in there. But, you know, if, if you, it would have been easily, easy for me to remove that um, while wiping. But you can see the different types of marks and how I have very nice detail here. And, you know, really great clarity around 10 minutes, between 10 and 20 minutes, that's really clear. You can see some of the streaking that has occurred from where the hard ground was applied, you know, cause I went through this pretty quickly. So I brushed it on and it wasn't completely dry when I uh, went through. So you can see some of those streaks is where the acid, you know, made its way through the, the streaks in the hard ground and started to etch the plate. Also, you can see the irregularity of the border, but that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the next thing that I need to do is clean the press bed. I'm gonna take my plate Grab some simple green, grab some paper towels. I usually leave this right on the press.
take my plate over here. Now you might want to wear gloves. I'm not going to wear gloves right now though because I have ink on my fingers. If I put on the gloves, the ink will get into the gloves. Now I'm done with my plate for today, so I want to remove all the ink out of the grooves. Make sure you get all of it because if you're going to print this again at a later time, you know, you don't want to have dried ink in your in your lines. That's pretty good. I can clean up the back myself. So again, you know, I'm an opportunistic cleaner when I can find something that's already dirty. There we go. And now I'm gonna bring it to the sink and use soap and water. Now I can feel the lines and I want to be a little bit more careful when I'm doing this with my hand um, just because those lines can be you know where it was foul biting along the edge is kind of rough and I don't want to accidentally you know scrape my finger or anything like that. Okay, now I'm gonna dry this.